Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my team and I are so, so excited to finally be here at our phase four areas announcement. We've got an exciting schedule planned this evening. And in just a moment, we're going to have our broadband manager, Mark Cook, come over and get us started. But just real quick, wanted to thank everyone for joining this evening and wanted to let you know that we've got some exciting presentation material for you. But if you have any questions in the meantime, just drop them in the chat there, comment those, we'll keep record of them. And then at the end of the presentation, we're going to have some time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, let us know. And then, of course, we could not be doing this without some giveaways. You know, we want to have some fun. So in order to enter to uh, win the giveaway, you would need to just comment, say hi, drop a comment, a question, and uh, we'll randomly draw a winner and reach out to them at the end. So thank you. And I'm going to have uh, Mr. Cook come over and kick us off. Thanks, Caitlin. I appreciate it. And again, I want to welcome everyone as well to this evening's Facebook Live event. You know, we haven't done one of these, I don't believe, this time of day. We've done a few live events early in the day, but, but I hope this is a good time, everybody. And again, we appreciate everybody attending. So I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to kind of introduce, again, my name is Mark Cook. I'm the broadband manager, as Caitlin mentioned. I want to tell you a little bit about us as a company. And uh, I'll, I've got a little few slides on the presentation and hope you follow along with that. So, you know, all the time we, obviously everybody knows who Cumberland Electric is, CMC, the light company, you know, we're known by all those things. And we've been in business since 1938. We've been around. Uh, you can see the, uh, the subsidiary of Cumberland Connect was established in 2019. And I'll get into a little bit of the history of that. So we're, we're, we're a little newer on the broadband side, but you can trust that you, we've been around as a company for over 80 years. So I think you can take some confidence that we're not going anywhere. We're here. We're embedded in our communities, and we love serving our communities. And that's what the co-op model is all about. I love telling the story of our why. Our why is why we were created in the 30s. Uh, and I've got a couple of good uh, example pictures here of what that means by creating. Because a lot of folks today may not even understand what an electric co-op is or what a co-op model is. And obviously in the 30s, the, the rural electrification uh, authority you know, that came about during the Great Depression, right after that. And rural America was not, didn't even have electricity, right, in the 30s. So uh, electric co-op was created to take electricity to rural America, period. And I think we've succeeded at that greatly, and we all are, are benefiting from electricity. Uh, you know, you don't, you, don't, you don't really go anywhere in, in the United States anyway where there's not electricity, unless there's a reason there's not electricity in a park or, or a national force of something. But in fast forward 80 years, we have pockets and we have what's called the digital divide where there are large pockets that are largely unserved with broadband. And here we go again, co-ops are going to step up like Cumberland Electric has, and we're going to fill that gap. And we're going to take broadband to those same rural Americans, those same CMC members that we did 80 years ago in rural America. So that is our story of why we're doing this. We are a not-for-profit. We are not doing this. We're not profit-driven. And we're literally bringing internet where nobody else will. And we're excited to do that. Uh, real quick history on how we got here, because we, we haven't been able to do this forever. Just as recent as a little over five years ago, uh, the state of Tennessee passed what's called the Broadband Accessibility Act, and you see it in April 2017. Some of the provisions of that is if electric co-ops chose to do broadband and it was an option, you had to stay within your electric footprint. And you can't serve any other areas inside of your footprint if it was already served by a rural telephone cooperative. And we do have an area in our uh, eastern portion of our service territory that is served by that. Another thing that's a requirement, which I love, is called universal service. That means we have to have a plan to serve every single electric member that we are allowed to serve in our broadband deployment. And we wouldn't have had it any other way, honestly. We want to be able to serve everybody. Now, what comes with that is it takes a little time because we're start, we started from scratch, and we'll get into that here in a minute as well. Also, the, the business structure 
was uh, created as a subsidiary, like I mentioned. And then, obviously, the funds we had to take have uh, had to be separated from the electric side. Uh, where we are today, uh, everything in this green slide on this map, which is our entire service territory, and some of the communities are highlighted here or labeled, everything in green today has access to Cumberland Connect broadband services, and that's internet, video, and phone. Um, we are happy to announce uh, the phase four uh, areas tonight, and then obviously phase five uh, will be our final phase. But the area in blue here is our current phase three. We're about halfway through that. We are working up in the Greenbrier area, and we'll transition over to the White House area later on this month. And then we'll be in Coopertown to wrap up the remainder of phase three. But uh, the four areas, and I've got better maps here in a minute, the four areas that we're going to be concentrating and announcing tonight are the phase four substations. And we feed all of our broadband internet outside of a substation footprint. That's how we define those. So let me get to these areas. And you can see in this map, everything in purple is our phase four. On this map, we have two maps. You can see some landmarks here uh, along I-24. That's kind of the major interstate that we have here highlighted. But we go, we go all the way from southeast Cheatham County over near East Cheatham Elementary up through Pleasant View and the Bear Wallow area on into Montgomery County. And you can see up through exit 11 where our service territory intersects CDE there near East Montgomery and then up towards Port Royal. So those are three areas right there. Also, we've got uh, areas over to our east in Robertson County. We've got Cross Plains, and you can see the areas there at borders north about Highway 25 and south to Highway 76. And then our last area is the Mansker substation, which is uh, obviously a small community. Uh, phase five, I'll just quickly hit on those, and those are going to be in orange, and those are over uh, to the east, mostly encompassing in the Sumner County area. Uh, real quick, and I'll wrap this part of our presentation up. CMC, your electric provider, has 108,000 meters. We've already passed almost 49,200 locations. We have a little over almost 17,000 subscribers. We're probably over halfway with construction as far as 3,000 miles of fiber built to date. And again, we mentioned we're in the middle of phase three of a five-phase project. And then phase four itself will pass an additional 20,800 locations. So, with that, we'll transition to the next uh, component of the presentation tonight, and that's a little bit about construction. Mm -hmm. So, um, I will continue on and uh, just briefly talk, because the construction part I mentioned a minute ago, we are building this network, this, this, uh, this fiber network from scratch, and we started in November of 2019, and here we are, fast forward a little over two years, uh, two and a half years later, and we've already built half of it. Uh, one of the several stages, several things have to happen before internet comes to your home. Uh, one big thing is right away. And when we say right away electrically, we mean the vegetation, the trees. We have to get the right away cleared. And that serves, benefits both the, the uh, broadband, the communication, also to serve, it helps benefit electric uh, reliability as well. When, when the wind blows and there's trees there, it's bad news. So you can see some before and after pictures, how we really pay attention to right-of-way construction. And that you'll see right-of-way happen weeks and months ahead of any kind of fiber construction, even up to a year ahead of time. Because it takes, I mentioned a substation footprint, it could take up to a year just to cut the right-of-way in a substation, depending on how big that, that area is. So that's why that's always got to be in front. Next thing we do, we go in there and we make sure the poles can accept the aerial fiber, and that just means that makes sure that there's enough room on the poles to do that. Uh, if in certain cases we have to change the pole out, in certain cases there's enough room on the pole already, we may just have to make adjustments on some of the uh, facilities that are on the pole, and then we can come in after that. And then that's called make ready. We make the pole ready to accept the fiber, which is the next part of that. We call that mainline construction. And two types of mainline construction. We have overhead and underground. Uh, you obviously see the overhead crews out working. You may have seen them in your areas uh, depending on where you live. And if you're in phase four and five, you will see them coming soon in the next year or two. 
So you'll see contractor trucks mainly. We contract out this new construction. You'll see guys in bucket trucks. You'll see guys climbing poles. You'll see different types of equipment on aerial construction. Uh, what to expect uh, really when we get to your areas, if you have underground electricity, we always follow the path of electricity mostly. So if you have overhead construction in your area near your home, we're going to come in overhead uh, the same way with our fiber. And if you're underground, we'll follow the path of electricity there as well. You may see uh, what we call utility locates. Everyone's heard of Tennessee One Call. We have to follow those same rules. If we dig anything in the ground, we have to locate our utility so we don't interrupt that service. Uh, you'll see flags. You'll see paint on the roads. You'll see several things along that, uh, along those uh, circuits that we're building the fiber. Um, you might see some machinery. You might see some crews opening some of the electric uh, pad mount transformers to run some fiber in. We've got various construction methods that we try to do to minimize the impact on our underground subdivisions in our community. And then part of that mainline construction is they set the facilities ahead of the crew that comes in and pulls the fiber. And that's mainline fiber. And I know I'm kind of talking fast here. I'm trying to make up some time. But some pictures here of what you might see out on mainline construction and, you know, some conduit and then some other. I mentioned the pad mount transform. And you can even see some of the locates on that picture to the right there. Uh, next thing we do, we splice. You know, we you run so much fiber and fiber is a piece of glass. So critical part of that construction is splicing that, making those two ends meet. And that's a that's a time consuming endeavor. You know, a lot of our fiber counts are up to 144 pair of fiber. And that, that takes a while because we have to have that connection, that joint very seamless so that light can flow through and without any, without much uh, degradation to the signal there. So you'll see splicing take place. And then at the end of that, before we open up a zone or around that time, you'll see these taps on the, on the poles if you're overhead construction, and you'll see uh, maybe a spool of fiber. And that's a good sign. That means we're really close to opening up your area to sign up for Cumberland Connect services. You know, Mark, I was going to mention too, sometimes we get questions from our members about the tap. And they'll say, well, you know, my neighbor's got a black box on the pole yes. and I don't. Does that mean that you forgot about us? Yeah, that's a great point. Thanks, Caitlin. Uh, that tap can serve up to a various number of homes. It can, you know, as small as, as few as two, but I think up to eight homes can come out of a, a tap like that. So even though you may only see one on a pole nearby, that is capable and, and designed to be able to serve multiple homes. Good point. Uh, this picture on the on this presentation now is kind of a just a, a mock-up of what some of the components of our construction is. And I mentioned that uh, tap on the pole. And if you look on this far uh, right, that big black box labeled number one, that's that's what you'll see if it's aerial, you see it on the pole. If it's underground, you won't even see it because it'll be in a pedestal. But then that cable will either, again, run, follow the path of electricity, either overhead or underground. And that number two there, that network interface device, that NID, that attaches to the side of the home near the meter base. Because one thing we want to make people understand is we're obviously constructing this for broadband, but we're also doing this electrically for future smart grid applications. And that could be meter reading and, and various other things that uh, that we will look to in the future. So this fiber to the home is a very future-proof uh, communication network that we will benefit from in the next you know decades, honestly. So that's all on the outside of the house. Even if you sign up for service, you don't really need to really get involved too much. Once you sign up, they'll do all of that drop and they'll do the NID attachment. Then you'll get a call and then you'll get the uh, inside of the home. And that's Right now, that's two devices. That number three is a little uh, network terminal. And then four is the Gigaspire router. And I think Emily and Mike will probably talk more about those here in a minute. You know, Mark, real quick before you scoot away from that yeah. screen there, I love that visual because that shows, you know, when we say that we're different because we bring fiber all the way to the home, you know, we're not stopping down the road or at the right. pole and bringing some other method you know, across the property. So this is actually illustrating Absolutely. one of the most unique things about our project is that 100% fiber is coming all the way to the home or business and mm -hmm. then inside. Yeah, that's a good point too, because a lot of a lot of carriers will say they have fiber. You're served by fiber, but that doesn't mean 
they have fiber to your home. It means right. it could be that last mile, as they say, could be copper. Right. And that's that's a good point. And that's how we, we make it happen. Absolutely. So I mentioned the drop construction again, overhead. Really won't go into that because once you sign up, the, our crews just take care of that. That all happens kind of without your really, you really need to uh, get involved unless you have an underground service. And then we ask if you have some private utility, we certainly want you to uh, locate that for us. Um, this is just some pictures of that uh, drop construction. I'll kind of go through that. And that picture on the right there is literally that nid on the side of the house. And you can see the technician there. Literally, that's fiber optic cable going inside of that network interface the uh, interface device on the side of your home. It's not a mile up the road like Caitlin was mentioning earlier. It's at your house and runs into your house, actually. So that's that's a big differential uh, part of our company. We're taking fiber to every single location. Um, mentioned the underground construction. You might see a machine like this that can do some, you know, get under your driveway or sidewalk that, you know, we don't have to tear that up. We can bore under that and it would be very uh, minimal uh, uh, construction uh, activity there. Um, then, you know, if it's a, another type, we do what's called a, a vibratory plow. You rarely even see that we've been there after you mow the yard, or if it rains a couple of times, you won't even know we've been there. I really love those pictures, too, because sometimes when we're talking to members and we say that we're bringing in this large equipment and we're yeah. going to be doing what we're doing, and, you know, you take care of your yard and you get a little nervous sometimes. Your mind goes Absolutely. to some scary places and we say we're going to dig. And uh, I've seen this little machine in person. It is really neat. And those pictures there just show how minimally invasive that our crews work so hard to be during this process. Yes. And I think that's a that's a really great tool there. And that email that, that you were showing just a moment ago on that next slide, I think is a... Yeah. A powerful piece to mention as well. Yeah, because, you know, we, Kayla mentioned we certainly want questions coming in tonight. We love those and we'd love to answer as many as we can. But if you have questions afterwards and you maybe you see this after the fact or any time during this whole process, if you have any questions, especially when you're maybe your subdivision or your area is under construction and you have a question, please jot down that email address and you can find it on our website, cumberlandconnect.org as well. But it's just construction at cumberlandconnect.org and we will. Uh, have one of our team uh, that can answer that, get back to you as quickly as possible. So I encourage you, and we enjoy interacting with our members, and we love questions coming in uh, regarding anything that you have a question about. Because we really, I mean, the experience of our members and our subscribers matters so much, especially right at the front end with yes. the construction as well. So, you know, if there are any issues, that email comes straight to our team. Yes, it does. We'll tackle those as soon as they come in. Yeah, most everybody that you'll hear from tonight is probably one of them are going to see this email or other email addresses that if you have a question and we respond, you know, these emails are locally <laughs> received and locally responded uh, from our from our team. So thank you for that. Mark, real quick, uh, you had mentioned with the underground drops that sometimes if somebody had a private utility yes. that they would need to let us know. Could you give just a couple examples of something that they would need to let us know and then also how do they reach out to our team yeah. during that process? Yeah, good point. I mentioned the Tennessee One Call. Obviously, when we come in, we have to locate all public utilities. But many homes with underground, you know, electricity also have what we call private utilities. And that could be anything from an underground pet fence to an irrigation sprinkler type system. Uh, it could be various things like that that only you can know where they are. If you let us know when you call in or sign up for the service, or you can let us know through this email address, construction at Carmen Connect, we will we will inform our contractors to let them know there's something there. And if you can mark it, that's even better. They will try to miss it. I'm not going to say we always miss those things, but if we do hit them, we will repair them um, as promptly as we can um, because we know underground pet fences and irrigation systems, especially now uh, with the dryness, but those are critical things that you need to keep working at your home. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. I didn't get a chance to introduce myself earlier. I apologize. My name is Caitlin Bonds. I'm the creative director here at uh, CEMC and Cumberland Connect. And uh, we're you know, going to talk a little bit more about our services and you know, as a group, as an organization, as a team from the very beginning. We have always said that we are going to be member-centric 
and that we are going to focus 100% on the experience that we're providing our subscribers. And uh, just a moment, we're going to have Mike Neverdusky come up and talk about what goes into making our fiber network what it is today. But I wanted just to really quickly tell you sort of what we feel as a team that we're working very hard to do, and that's being different. You know, we always say, and if you've ever had Chick-fil-A, we always say we want to be the Chick-fil-A of internet service providers. And if you've ever had Chick-fil-A, you know what we mean by that. We want you to know that we care and that we're doing things the right way. You know, we are local, simple, transparent pricing, no hidden fees, no data caps, we won't throttle speeds, no residential contracts, free standard residential installation, and I'm gonna let Mike talk about this in a moment, but state-of-the-art equipment included with services as well as 24-7, 365 support. This is all the things that you should expect from your service provider, we believe you deserve the best. So I'm gonna have Mike come in and he's gonna talk more about our network and y'all keep the questions coming in. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Caleb. So I'll give you a little behind the scenes about what kind of network we've built for you. Um, I'm really proud about the network we've built. It's, uh, there's many years of experience that I've brought to this project as well as our team and some of the partners we use to help design this. I think what you'll find is uh, our members enjoy a lot of uptime. There's not a lot of times where you're wondering why the internet's not working. And I'll tell you why. So we touched on already it's fiber all the way to the home. So that inherently is the best level of or type of internet that you can get to your house. And we want you to have the best, as Caitlin always says. So that fiber is coming all the way into your house, like Caitlin and Mark discussed. But once the fiber leaves your house, where does it go? Why are we better in that regard? So the fiber from your house will make its way back to one of our substations, like they mentioned earlier, and there we have our equipment. And that is pretty much the only single point of failure in the network. It's just something that you can usually see driving to and from work or from your house or to the supermarket. You know, if that gets cut right there, you'll probably be down for a little bit, but we usually get those back up same day as quick as we can. Um, from that point, though, once, once your, your fiber is handed off to our network, it is redundant in every single regard that we could possibly make it redundant. Um, there is rings in the network. There's mesh topology in the network. There's multiple places for your internet to go if something fails. So it's very common that we do have, you know, sometimes we do get a cut in the network further up beyond there, and nobody ever knows. It just fails over almost instantaneously, usually less than 50 milliseconds, and everybody's back online. Um, one of the things that we, you know, it, to relate to people that have been in the area for a little while, you may have remembered back in 2020 that a, a you know, tragedy in Nashville, there was a Christmas, there was a bombing there, and it hit a telecommunications building. And it caused a big outage for Middle Tennessee and some of the surrounding states too, cell service, internet, home phone. Uh, we had people that couldn't even reach their family and friends uh, because of that outage. So we have tested our network, and our network has passed tests that we could take one of our data centers completely offline and literally nobody knows. It doesn't have to be, the other one doesn't have to be turned on. They're both running at the exact same time. So you're watching your YouTube, your YouTube Netflix, whatever, Disney Plus that your kids like. Um, doesn't even pause, doesn't blip. It immediately failed over. You never knew. So that's how we built this network. And what that results in is lots of more time for you and your family at watching your internet, your shows, doing the things you love uninterrupted. Uh, some other things we like to do is be very proactive with our members. So you can ask some of our members now, you know, if they have had an outage, there's a good chance uh, that you may receive a phone call from a live phone call from someone on our team, not an automated robot or anything like that. So we have, you know, if it's a small enough outage, we'll have our tech support team usually make phone calls personally and let you know what's going on and about when we're going to get it fixed. And we've also got a lot of tools from our vendors that we use, and we've made a lot of strategic partnerships to have technology that tells us when these outages occur so that you don't have to call us and wait on hold with, you know, several other people that are also trying to reach us. So, you know, in outages of situations like five or more people, um, we'll automatically know that. We'll get an email from our system, and we usually start reaching out. And by the time you're calling us, our network operations team is already researching it and dispatching field personnel. So a lot of times you'll call tech support and we'll we already know. We're working on it. And those kind of practices and the tools we put together allowed us to earn, uh, in our first year of business, we won an award from Calix, who's one of our strategic partners in helping us build our network and provides a lot of our equipment. Uh, we won the uh, 
Network Operations uh, Innovations Award with them in our first year of doing business. It's against you know, hundreds of other uh, operators that deliver these similar services across the country. That, that's the outside technology. So the inside technology, they touched on it pretty well already. So we do provide the, uh, the home router, uh, home or business router, with, with the service. It's free. We don't charge for it. We want you to have the best experience. So we, we make a good effort to make sure you're covered. If you're taken care of, we want, you, we want you to not have to worry when you call us. So that router usually can cover about 2,500 square feet. If your house is bigger than that, don't worry. We have mesh units that can give you a seamless experience. You can roam throughout your house. You'll never know it's switching between the two. Uh, with the router, we also have a, a, a free app. It's called the CC Fiber Smart IQ app. And that gives you additional features. It lets you control your router, change settings. Uh, you can set up a guest network. I've, I've done that at my house. The kids were over tonight. I've got kids at the house right now. Wife said, how do they get on the network? I texted her a message and I turned on the guest network so they could be on it tonight. And they have the password. They all got on and they're happy on the guest network. Um, and with that app, we have a, you know, Emily will touch on this in a minute, but we do have a, it allows us to have better visibility and to support. So when you do call us, we try not to ask you 20 questions. We'll have a lot of the answers already in front of us and we'll minimize, you know, how much, how many questions we have to ask you and speeds up the process. Uh, so on top of that app, I've touched on a few things already with it. Um, you can manage the whole network, but we do have some additional uh, features with the app through our peace of mind package. So our peace of mind package is an add-on. It does cost a little extra, um, but it, it allows you to have enhanced parental controls, such as setting content restrictions and things like that. So you could block certain types of content that you don't want your, your family, your grandkids, your kids, or whoever to see. And it also comes with a security feature that's whole home network security. So it's protecting things coming into your home, across your home, leaving your home. And it just, you know, it's, it's meant to, it's not to replace antivirus. It won't fix anything, but it will protect and help prevent you from getting infected in the first place. And if that's not good enough for the peace of mind package, we do offer six free service calls a year. So this is the total peace of mind. You know, if you have you know, an animal outside that likes to chew fiber and things like that, it's very common. Um, you know, th those service charges won't. You know, we won't be billing you for those damages. So <clears throat> with that, uh, we'll hand it back over to Kim. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, we are uh, going to move on, but I just wanted to let everybody know, sending in those questions, we see them, keep them coming. We are going to recap a few things that we've already talked about at the end, and then, of course, we're going to have that time for Q&A. So I've got my phone on me. I see the, the questions coming in, so just keep them coming. We really appreciate that. I'm going to have Emily come up, and she's going to talk a bit more about the support because, again, we want to make sure that the experience is amazing all the way up through and after installation. And Emily and her team do an excellent job at taking care of our subscribers. So I'll let Emily take it from here. Thanks, Caitlin. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight, and I hope everyone's having a fabulous evening. Um, I'm Emily Johnson. I am the Broadband Services Supervisor here at Cumberland Connect. Um, tonight, I want to talk to you about the support that you will receive after you have been installed with, with our service, um, TV, Internet, or home phone service, which whatever you may happen to have with us. Um, like Caitlin and Mike have already said, we do have 24-7, 365 um, tech support here. These folks are literally right around the corner from where we, we were hosting this Facebook Live event tonight. Um, these folks are local to our service territory. They are friends. They are neighbors. They are um, CEMC members. Um, they are here truly to serve you and to make sure that you have the best experience possible with the service that we provide. Um, just a couple things also to mention as well. Um, if you don't, if you, if you were to have a problem of some kind, Obviously, you're welcome to give us a call. Um, one great thing that we have is it's one number for service and for support. You just call our 800 number, the 800-987-2362. We'll press the option two for Cumberland Connect and just follow the prompts from there. This way you'll be able to um, talk to us in, live in person. Um, we also offer an option on our website for live chat. It is available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, if you were to go to the website on the weekends, the chat box is still there, and you're welcome to send us a message, and we'll be back in touch with, touch with you on the next business day. Um, we also have the Help Center available on our website. 
Um, the Help Center has some great tools and great resources available to you. If you want to try to solve that problem at home before giving us a call, please feel free to. We want all of our members to be educated on the services we provide, the equipment we use. So those questions and those answers are there for you um, as a tool that you can use as well. Um, a couple of other things I want to talk about really quick as well. If you have a Smart Hub account, um, you also have the ability to report an issue with your TV, internet, or phone service through your Smart Hub account. There's a way to, to report a problem to us. Our tech support agents will see that ticket. They'll know what's going on and be able to call you back. Um, like Mike had mentioned, we do have some awesome remote monitoring tools for our service. Um, with the Gigaspire router and being able to troubleshoot that, we are able to see when you call in and you say, hey, you know, this device is really not picking up good signal. I'm having a lot of issues. Or, hey, you know, I, there, something's going on in my house. I'm getting some slow speeds. Our technicians are able to use these tools to go through the troubleshooting steps and deduce what the actual problem is. Is it really something with the actual internet service or is it just something with the device that maybe a setting needs to be changed? But um, by all means, please give us a call if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, or if you just need help understanding about the service and what it all entails. Please call us. Um, our members deserve the best, and we want to make sure that that's something that you receive from us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Emily. You know, I, you said a couple things there that always make my heart really happy when I hear about it is, you know, our tech support team, they're right here in this building. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's just such a great group of people. I feel like they're really passionate about taking care of our subscribers. And you mentioned education. Yes. So not only do we want to help educate our subscribers on, you know, getting the most out of our services, but technology is always changing. It seems like every day, especially just after Amazon Prime Day, the there are all these amazing, cool, techie devices that are coming yeah. out. And I feel like our tech support team, we're really passionate about helping people to utilize those new devices and new tools because, you know, you think about how we're using internet in our homes today, well, that's going to be different tomorrow and then years afterwards. So Absolutely. I think education is a really big part of it, and I know it's really important to your team and, and to all of us. So oh, yes. thank Absolutely. you so much for that. Yes, Appreciate thank it. you. Awesome. Well, um, thank you so much, Emily. Again, we're just going to... We've got more questions coming in. We want to appreciate it. Just keep them coming. But I'm going to invite Jennifer up because I know we've been talking a lot about our network and our support, and we've mentioned our residential services. But we also have some really amazing fiber solutions for businesses, customized solutions, customized experiences. And Jennifer here is going to talk about that. And if you all have any questions, like I said, just keep them coming. Jennifer, I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Caitlin. So good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you all for joining us. Also, uh, I, I'm Jennifer Brown. I'm the Business Development Coordinator for Cumberland Connect. Uh, I want to start out by saying a big thank you to our 500-plus business subscribers. Ooh, yeah. So <laughs> thank you for supporting our project, and you all are amazing. Uh, I also look forward to the working or the opportunity to work with the 200 plus businesses in our phase four area. So we serve a very diverse uh, member base. We serve from small offices to large uh, industries, schools, local government, public safety buildings, uh, it, you name it, just about we've got it, uh, we serve them. So some people ask how that, that we really meet their needs and so we have a very high performance internet service up to 10 gigs for businesses. And so if you need e-commerce support or high definition video streaming, maybe for training your employees or voice services, uh, phone services, large file transfer needs, static IP needs. And, you know, we can even design a custom enterprise um, if you need point to port, point to point services or any kind of uh, dark fiber needs. So we can meet the needs of the majority of businesses in our service territory. We haven't um, had one yet that we could not meet their needs. So we've, we've got a variety of voice services for our, for our members from just a simple kind of POTS line type handoff all the way to a hosted type service, which if you've got a need for cell phone, if your cell phone clients or 
if you've got uh, remote employees. So we had a law office that during the pandemic, their employees could work from home. They took their phone and it appeared that they were working from the office. So I thought that was very interesting. We've also got video plans for our businesses, which we mainly work with small businesses. Um, when, when we talk about our video plan for, I mean, I'll say you're a doctor's office and you have a lobby or if you have a break room where you want your employees just to have the local channels or some sports channels. Uh, a lot of times I get asked why that a business member cannot go online and sign up for service on our website. So during that sales process and that sales journey for our business members, we've got a dedicated team. So we can help you determine the best internet service, the best voice service, the best video service, and then we design an installation plan. So we may have to come out for a site visit to look at your equipment, so we have a sales engineer for that. And then we've got an amazing outside plant team that can go and look at your business and see what the best install path will be. So we've got a team dedicated to your business because we want this whole process to be very stress-free so that you can focus on your day-to-day -day operations and your business. So if you call in and you request service, our team is going to contact us and let us know that you are interested in a call. And what we will do is email you to set up a, a time that I can call you, we can go through what your needs are, what uh, your current uh, provider you know, provides you, and then I will, uh, with our team, come up with a special business solution for your business. Once, once you, uh, we've conducted our site visits if needed, then we will, I'll send out a quote. And so, and then we, once you approve that quote, we will begin the account setup. And we just really want to make sure that we support local businesses, that, that we highlight our amazing local entrepreneurs and, and these small businesses. It's all about community and, you know, as Mark has mentioned, Emily, Caitlin, Mike, everyone's mentioned, you know, you guys are our why and we want to support you, um, you know, our employees, if we're ever out in the area, we want to eat at your local restaurants and we want to purchase things from your uh, businesses. So we, I would love for you to reach out. if you have questions about our services, you can call me on my cell phone or you can text me and my cell phone number is 931-206-2180 and just let me know what your business name is and what the address is and I will reach out to you and um, I, I hope to hear from you all. So yeah, look forward to it. I know, I'm, I'm just keep coming and going around, so I'm walking around the camera here. I have to speak really highly for Jennifer. I have to speak highly about our entire team, but I feel like every day Jennifer's saying something about how much she loves working with our local businesses. So, you know, it's, uh, it's something I know that it's coming from your heart. And, you know, we're here to serve our membership and our communities, but, you know, there are projects like this all over the country that have shown a spark in entrepreneurship, economic development, that yes. the introduction of broadband in these rural communities, you know, a lot of times for the first time is bringing more and more businesses and just helping really healthy growth in these areas. And, you know, someone like Jennifer being on your team as a business owner is only going to help you know, keep things growing. So I just had to speak highly about Thank Jennifer and, and her putting her heart into what she does. Thank you. It's just I hear it every day. It's a blessing to get to provide and, and help match our solutions with these businesses and to get to work with these amazing business owners. I mean, there's not a day that goes by that they don't cease to amaze me and the wonderful products they put out and the community support. And, you know, if you've got a community event that you need a sponsorship or you've got an upcoming event that you would like us to share you know, we've got free marketing opportunities because we want to promote your business. We've launched a business highlight series where we'll go out and highlight our local businesses, and that's free. And, you know, we, we want to start highlighting these businesses on our social media platforms, and we've got an outreach of, what, 
hundred thousand I mean, plus oh, on. If we do, we yeah. have thousands and thousands yeah. of uh, reach and followers, yeah. and that's a, a special project that Jennifer mm -hmm. and I have been working on, and we're really excited yeah. about. Especially these locally owned businesses are amazing, mm -hmm. and the more people that we can get going through their doors and helping them grow, that's that's just another reason that we're doing what we're doing. You know, we are a locally owned organization. Right but we are still providing state-of-the-art, innovative services for industries, businesses of all sizes. That's and right. so that's just something I know that you're really proud of and I'm mm -hmm. really proud of. You know, and our whole, whole team worked really hard to make that happen, so I appreciate yeah, that. And I, I could not do this without the help of our whole team on the CEMC side and on the Cumberland Connect side. I mean, it is just, it's just an amazing company and mm -hmm. coworkers never cease to amaze me, these businesses don't, so just, a shout out to all of our coworkers and to, to all the businesses that support our project. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, you know, we the obviously the theme of the evening is our why, and we're going to continue talking about this forever because it's, you know, that that's what it is. We are here to serve our communities and our members, and we're going to keep saying it over and over. But uh, one of the things that I'd like to talk about really quickly is We've got some really incredible resources for our subscribers that I'd like to talk about. And then one of the number one questions that we get is, when is Cumberland Connect coming to my area? And how will I know when I can sign up? So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. I want to highlight, though, you know, we talk about bringing reliable broadband services to our members. But we also want to make sure that those services are affordable and accessible for the families in our area. And so we're really excited and we're proud to be participating in both the FCC's Affordable Connectivity Program and also the Lifeline Program. And they're really awesome for eligible households. They're able to uh, get discounts on their monthly service cost. You can find out more about both of those programs on our website, cumberlandconnect.org forward slash lifeline or forward slash ACP. So be sure that you check those out. If you all have any questions about those programs, please feel free to reach out to our team. But the information is there, and they're just incredible resources. We're also really excited about our recently launched Win-Win Referral Program. And this was just another resource that we wanted to provide for our subscribers to help make our services accessible and affordable. So as a Cumberland Connect subscriber, you are going to have a unique referral code. You can hand that referral code out to everyone, friends, family, neighbors, the mailman, that guy you always see at the grocery store, everyone. Whenever your unique referral code is used to sign up for Cumberland Connect, your friend will get $10 off their first bill, and then you will get $10 off your next bill after your friend's installation has been complete. My favorite thing about it, though, is that we do not cap the amount of credits that you can earn. So if you refer enough people each month, you can get free internet. Both residential and business subscribers can take advantage of the referral program. And if you refer more people than your bill is every month, that extra credit just sits in your account and you just eat from it as your next bill comes due. So we want you to be sending that referral code out all over the place. We'd love everybody to have free internet through the referral program. So be sure you take advantage of that. Information's on the website, cumberlandconnect.org forward slash refer a friend. And then just real quickly, again, back to that question. When is Cumberland Connect coming to my area and how will I know when to sign up? So really the best way to keep up to date on our progress, visit our website. You're going to see a button that says check availability. Click that, follow the prompts. You'll be registered We're going to receive our monthly email update. My team and I, we send out the monthly email updates about the first week of every month. But we'll talk about the construction progress. We also announced our coming soon zones. And those zones are the ones that we're projecting to make services available during the next 30 days after that update. In addition to that, about four months prior to when we project to open your area, we will start to send targeted communication, including postcards and emails as well. I want you all to know what those are going to look like because I want you to be sure that you're keeping an eye on both your inbox and your mailbox. It's like a six by nine postcard. You're not going to miss it. But the first one you're going to see is fiber is coming. It means you're about four months out. Next one is going to say stop, wait, don't sign a contract. We usually send that one about two months prior to when we project to be opening up your area. 
And then about 30 to 45 days prior to your zone opening, you're going to get a little booklet in the mail that says, get ready, fiber is coming soon. And that's going to have some really great information about our services. So you'll be ready to go uh, whenever we open your zone. And if you've signed up for those updates, we are going to send you an email literally the minute that you can sign up for services. So be sure to take advantage of that. So I know that we went through a lot of information and we've gotten a lot of incredible questions. So we're going to do uh, our Q&A now. I will say we see a lot of the questions asking about a specific location. Um, just like the check availability there, if we don't get to all of the questions, you can certainly look at the status map. I will say we have not yet updated our website status map. We wanted to wait until after the announcement today, so we're going to be updating that tomorrow. So if you look at the status map tonight, it is not going to be up to date. It's not accurate quite yet. But if you have a question about a specific address, my team and I will be happy to reach out to you and give you some additional information. I'm going to comb through some of the questions that we've got. Mark's going to come up and we're going to tackle some of those as well. We're sitting in a room of subject matter experts. So if you've got a question, we will get an answer. If we don't get to all the questions this evening, I promise we will reach out to you directly as well. So Mark, if you don't mind to come on up, we're going to start coming through the questions. Keep them coming in though. We're keeping an eye out. Yeah, I, I, again, thank you guys. We've been throwing a lot of information at you guys. And one thing I think you can realize is the passion that we all have in, in, in doing this project. And, and we always say we can't think of a better group of people to serve. And there are members. And we're really sincere about that. And I, I will say, you know, that same passion is on your side too. And I, I know that we have had uh, several questions come in tonight on why we chose to go where we did first and where we are going next. And I get it. That's, that was one of the biggest problems and the biggest uh, really things we studied when, before we even launched our project. And our, I'll be honest with you, our consultant wanted us to go to the more densely populated areas first to start generating revenue. And we just didn't feel like that was the right way to approach. We didn't feel like that was the co-op way. So we asked our consultants to go back and rethink. And we asked them to say, hey, where are the most underserved locations in our service territory? And that's where we went first. Now, we're halfway through the project, and we certainly have uh, kept that strategy for the first several phases of our project. But that doesn't mean that even though you weren't in one of the first phases, you still may not have access to high-speed internet at your home, even though some of the competitors say they may serve you. And I, we hear that each and every day, and we understand that. And that is a, a, a top of our list on why we are doing this project. I will say, uh, I've said it a couple of times, this project is pretty big scale. Uh, we do not, we have started in November of 2019, we launched in March of 2020, and if you all know, or excuse me, May of 2020, if you all know what happened was in May of 2020, we're right in the middle of a COVID pandemic, that did not slow us down one, one second. We have in fact not stopped construction, and a lot of people accuse uh, our project of starting and stopping depending on grant dollars. That is just not the truth. Uh, we certainly apply for grant dollars that we think are going to benefit our, our, our members and to aid in some offsetting some of the capital costs to build this project. But we are building this project literally as fast as we can go. We have tapped all resources available uh, within this region and, and this uh, with our contractors, our consultants, and our material suppliers. And we are going as fast as we can. That still doesn't help the person that may be in phase four and phase five because we get it. We still know that everybody needs internet and they want to know when. And Caitlin referred to that. And the best way to do that is, like she said, is sign up for those updates, uh, check availability, go to our website. We, we announce zone openings, try to every week. Sometimes we have to take a break on a zone opening because of other factors. But again, uh, the biggest reason we went where we went first was underserved, but now that has kind of gone into more factors. And I mentioned the right of way, the construction. I mentioned also, you know, we try to open up about five substation footprints in each calendar or each phase or about every calendar year. But it takes a while to cut right away and it takes a while to build and it takes a while. But 
if you hear anything tonight, believe me, we're coming as fast as we can. And some of the timelines are kind of going to be on this new update uh, post on our status map. We will finish phase three this calendar year, 2022. So that'll be, like I said, through the five substations, 20,000 plus locations passed. Early in 2023, we'll be launching this phase four, and that'll be uh, posted soon on the areas that we're coming to. Um, we hope to finish phase four sometime later in the calendar year of 2023, and we'll be rolling right into phase five. And we will be completely finished with our project with the projections we have now, and if, unless something crazy doesn't happen, like some crazy material shortage or some other pandemic, uh, hopefully that won't happen. But we'll be finished in probably the third or fourth quarter of 2024. So in just a short four plus years, we will have built 5,500 miles of fiber uh, network in our service territory. And again, we're, we're not skipping anyone, but we have have to follow this strategy of building out according to when the right-of-way is ready and when our network design shows that area to be constructed and, and to be ready to construct. And also we understand, even though there shows to be some competition and existing carriers in the eastern portion of our territory, that does not mean that we don't realize that there are pockets of underserved and unserved folks that we got to get to as fast as we can. And we really are trying each and every day to, to prioritize that. I think too, you know, when I'm talking to members about kind of our process too, we're building out the, from each substation and we're following along those circuits. So we are just naturally passing locations that do have other providers yes. on our way to our members that don't. Yes. So it's, it's not at all that we're forgetting or that we're skipping. Uh, we are truly being as strategic as we possibly can to complete the entire construction as quickly as possible. You know, we're building over a system that's 80 plus years in the making, right. and we're doing it in five years. Yes. So it's, it's nearly unprecedented yes. speed of our construction. So we, I mean, many of us ourselves are members and waiting for the services. So we absolutely yes. know, we know the need is there. And so we appreciate Appreciate everyone, mm -hmm. of course. And I know um, I'm looking at the questions that have come in. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, um, we've got Kyle actually behind. He's, he's driving the, the camera. So Kyle, do you mind to put our phase four announcement map back up on the screen? Because I know some of our members maybe jumped on a little bit after we covered those areas. But Mark, do you mind to, to recap our exciting phase four areas announcements. Yeah, I, that's, thank you, Caitlin. And I, and again, I think I went through that very quickly and that was really the focus of tonight's Facebook Live. And, and I will show those, and I know we've got a couple of different maps that show the areas, the communities that we're focusing on. And I'll start with this, and we have kind of two va ma versions of the map, two different areas of our service territory, kind of focus in of where we're gonna go. And, and the map that I have up now, let me just kind of tell you the color cordon coordination. Everything in green already has service, right? And you can see that's in the Fredonia area out in, uh, you know, the, that part of the Highway 12, southeast part of Montgomery County. Everything in blue, you can see that's mostly the Cooperstown area. That's coming later this year. When I say later this year, I'm talking probably September. We'll start uh, opening up uh, the Cooperstown area. I will say Cooperstown is a big footprint for us electrically. The, the Cooperstown electric footprint is much larger than the community of Cooperstown. It goes all the way up to Kentucky electrically for, for us. So that's what the blue area is. If you're interested in what that little white area is, that's the city of Springfield. We don't serve electrically in the city of Springfield, so we don't take fiber there or broadband. And then up to the northwest is the city of Clarksville, same thing. Uh, but then the area that we're opening in part of phase four is that purple area that kind of runs from, again, um, eastern part of Montgomery County, and we call that the Shady Grove substation, but you can see that runs almost from exit 11, the southeast part of that, uh, down around along 41A, along I-24, uh, through past exit 19, just north of that. You can see we already serve some of that area south and west of exit 19, down through exit 24, which is the Pleasant View exit, and then on further southeast, all the way down into where we uh, adjoin the NES uh, Davidson County Series Territory, but also it goes further south down towards Ashton City, and that would be the Bear Wallow 
area of Cheatham County. And then obviously sandwiched in between there is Pleasant View. So those are the three big areas in Montgomery and Robertson County and Cheatham County that we'll be serving. And then the last two substations that will be in phase four are depicted on this map. Same color schemes. Green is this served already. That blue section that runs kind of in the middle of the purple and the green, that's still part of that Coopertown substation that I mentioned is so big. It really runs all the way up through there, west of Springfield, all the way up through uh, past 41 and, and 161. But that area in the purple is what we call our cross plane substation. And you can see some of the landmarks uh, there, you know, kind of seven, Highway 76 to the south, Highway 25 to the north. And then it obviously also runs up and, uh, and butts up to the Kentucky border as well. And that's a big footprint as well. Uh, Coopertown and Cross Plains are just big areas. So, uh, you know, it takes a while to build that. We, we average anywhere from 25 to 30 miles of construction a week. I don't even think I mentioned that. And that's in the summer months when we have, you know, 10, 12 hours of daylight. In the wintertime, we slow down a little bit, but we don't stop. You know, we just don't. So that's the fourth area of Cross Plains. And then the last one is a very small footprint, what's called our Mansker substation. And a lot of you live up in Mansker Farms. You know that area well. Uh, that's the fifth and final uh, area for phase four. So thank you, Mark. If you don't mind to, to leave the map up, I'm looking at some of the questions here. Again, if you've asked us about a specific address or a specific location, our team will reach out, we'll message you directly with that answer, or you can always message myself and my team at info at cumberlandconnect.org. You can also send us a message on our Facebook page. You can't see Kyle behind the camera here, but it's either myself or Kyle that you're going to be talking to when you message us on Facebook, and we are always happy to help. But I'm going to go ahead and tackle a couple of these answers, and then I know we've got some technical questions that we're going to make sure we get you some answers as well. Um, Mr. Kevin asked, uh, since the eastern portion of Robertson County, outside of the White House city limits along 31 West, has AT&T fiber, does that mean CEMC fiber will never be available? No. Mark mentioned earlier universal service. So one of the things that's unique about what we're doing is that we are expanding to all our CEMC members. And so if you are serviced electrically by CEMC, other than that small red portion that's notated on our status map, then we are gonna be expanding our Cumberland Connect fiber to your location. Now, Mark has mentioned a couple of the factors that drive our planning, most specifically the preparations like vegetation management and that does drive really the direction we're going from here until the end of the project. Mm -hmm. But yes, to answer your question, we are coming despite if you have other options or not. Mm -hmm. Now, another, uh, Ms. Heather asks, when will the Greenbrier area you are testing be able to sign up? We don't know exactly when the zone opening date is, but we do have one final circuit mm -hmm. in Greenbrier that we are right now preparing to open. So just keep an eye out on your email and in your mailbox. We will let you know as soon as you can sign up. And, and most likely, that's going to be in the next week or two. Yes. It's going to be very short. So we've gotten a couple questions. Like Ms. Amber asked, what is the cost going to be? Amber, we can drop some information about our services in the event and in the chat. But just mm -hmm. really quickly, our residential internet packages, we have two. Up to 250 megabits per second is $50 a month. We have a gig package, which is up to 1,000 megabits per second. That is $80 a month. There are no taxes and fees associated with our internet packages. So if you get the gig internet package and that's it, your bill is going to be $80. And, and that also does not include any hidden fees, such as an equipment fee or any fees, like you may typically and normally be used to getting charged. That $50 a month, if you just get our internet service and you get the 250 you literally pay 50 bucks a month. There's no installation fee. There's no any kind of fee that, to run the drop to your home, any of that, which you may normally, again, be used to seeing. So uh, that's key. Now, phone and, and TV, they certainly have some taxes on, yes. added to those. Yes. And that's uh, if you don't utilize the referral program. So, Absolutely. You know, yeah. It could, it could be even less expensive mm -hmm. than that. We did get a couple questions regarding if someone's going to be responsible running the fiber to their home or we're going to help with that. After you sign up for Cumberland Connect, we will run that fiber from our main line to your location. 
And uh, another question that we get a lot of times is, well, what if my house is 2,000 feet from the mm -hmm. road? How much is that going to you know, cost? Mm -hmm. It's my favorite question to answer, zero dollars. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if your house is five feet from the road or two miles from the road, we're going to bring that fiber all the way to your location. Yeah, that's a good point, too, because we hear daily of, of other providers that are not, maybe they're down the road, but you call them and say, hey, I need service, I want service, what's it going to take? And they'll give you a cost associated with extending that facility down to your house or your part of that road. And, you know, that's just because they're a for-profit company. They have to recoup their investment and be able to make money to do that. Obviously, we're trying to just, our, our model in the co-op is the cost recovery. We're trying to do it as, as, as fast and an inexpensive way as we can and provide the best service for our members. That's our bottom line. That's the co-op way, and, and that's the way we do electricity, safe, reliable, affordable, where it's the same thing we're doing with Internet. Mm -hmm. so. uh, Ms. Beverly asked, does this also include cell phones or just landlines? We do not offer cell phone service. When we do speak of phone, we are talking about more of like your landline phone. We have the residential or the business. If you yes. have our Wi-Fi and your cell phone's capable of Wi-Fi calling, that's mm -hmm. one thing but we do not offer cell phone service. Right. Um, we have gotten some really technical questions, and Mike's going to be able to handle those a lot better than I am, so I'm going to have him step up, and he's going to tackle those. Yeah, I was following along, too, and had to saw lots of good technical questions after I was up there. So I'm just going to knock these all out in one shot. Uh, I say this lovingly. These are very good nerd questions. I'm a nerd, so I'm the right guy to answer this. Um, Everyone's going to get a public IP address, so you're not going to get a private address. Someone asked if you were getting private addresses. We don't do that. We don't do any of that. So you will have a public address, so if you need to do any port forwarding or anything like that with any camera systems, um, you can do that with residential. It is dynamic addressing, so it can change. If you need a static address, even at your house, uh, that's considered a business plan. Please reach out to Jennifer, who was up here earlier. Um, we're also asking about security, port blocking, things like that. Um, we don't block any ports currently. Uh, we also have a lot of security mechanisms in place, so our equipment naturally prevents uh, people from seeing each other and broadcasts going across the network. They always go up and out of the network. So there's a lot of good uh, things like that set up in place as well. So I'm trying to think if there was any others. Those are the main ones I saw. Um, but I just want to get all that out of the way and cover that. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much, Mike. I'm running through the questions again. I see several about specific locations. We are going to reach out. Um, let's see. We're getting a lot of questions about when will phase four start, when will fi phase five start. Just to recap on that, preparations and some fiber construction is already underway in some of these phase four areas. So we are projecting to begin opening up some of our first phase four zones in the early part, maybe even January of 2023. Our construction for phase four will continue throughout 2023. And then our preparations will begin for phase five, probably in the late part of 2023, and then we'll go throughout 2024. But if you are in phase four, basically looking at 2023, Phase five areas, we're projecting services to be available to all of those areas by the end of 2024. So um, we're going to keep an eye out for any other questions coming in. Um, did you mention the server? Or the... Harvey asked, can I run my server? That's oh, okay. I missed that one. Harvey, can I run my server? Well, Harvey, you can always run a server on the system. Uh, we're not going to prevent you from hosting any websites or anything like that. So I'm assuming that's what you're asking. I'm not sure what exactly you're using the server for. But like I said, if you do need a static IP, that is a business package. So you can, uh, Jennifer Brown dropped her phone number in there earlier. So feel free to reach out to her if you, if you do need a static IP for whatever you're using it for. And Christopher asked, can I bring my own hardware, i.e. modem and router? Might want to recap. Yeah, yeah, I didn't cover that, Christopher, but yeah, you're welcome to do so. Uh, if you're a tech expert, like like a lot of us are, you can uh, you can definitely bring your own. You don't have to take our router. Um, so, you know, depending on the which area you're in, if you're in a future phase, or we'll have to do a little configuration. I did forget to mention that in our phases four and five, we're actually going to bring the fiber all the way to the router. Now we're not going to have two boxes in the house. I missed that earlier, uh, so that's exciting as well. So. 
Um, if that's the case with you, Christopher, you're in four or five, uh, we can probably you know, work with you and put the router in bridge mode and let you use whatever you want in your house. So uh, if you call tech support though, so that we're a little more hands off. It's not as much as we can do because we don't have the visibility. So we're going to kind of rely on you to be that expert and troubleshoot your house. Mm -hmm. And Brenda asks, will unlimited be offered? Well, Brenda, we have no data caps. So on our internet, it is unlimited and you can use as much as you like. No data caps. We will not throttle your speeds. And I think someone else asked earlier if the speeds are symmetrical and they are. So whatever speed you're buying, you're getting an upload and download. We're just we've got still more questions coming in. Y'all just keep them coming. Mark, did you have anything else you wanted to add? I'm still running through. Uh, there's been a couple questions about pricing on phone and TV. We can certainly reach out to you directly and provide information. It is on our website, but we do have three different TV packages. So we can certainly reach out and make sure we answer any questions there about pricing and packages. Give us just a moment. We're running through these questions again. I want to make sure that we get uh, all of those answered for you. Okay. Yeah, I jump back in here. Uh, Caitlin's trying to talk and read at the same time. Uh, that's hard, hard task to do. Um, you know, we don't. Uh, I think one question came in about senior citizen discounts. We we honestly don't offer those. We do, like Caitlin mentioned, we do participate in Lifeline and ACP Affordable Connectivity Program. So if for all qualifying members, you do get a, uh, a discount, a largely discounted and, and up to free internet service, depending on, uh, you know, what you, what you apply for. Uh, but we try to price our services as low as we possibly can. And so we don't offer senior or, or discounts uh, for citizens in that way. So I apologize for that. Uh Somebody asked to repeat the phase three construction date. We are projecting to have services available to all phase three areas by the end of this calendar year. There are a couple questions about the White House area as well. We are completing fiber construction, splicing, testing in those White House areas now. We're going to be moving towards zone openings there in the next few weeks. White House, you're next. Yes. You're right after Greenbrier. We we are almost finished deploying and opening up the Greenbrier zones that we mentioned. Uh, White House is next. Uh, White House is a very densely populated area, uh, but it's not a very large footprint. Like I mentioned, Coopertown was. Uh, Coopertown, you're right after White House. I will say that. And I will say Coopertown has been very vocal, and you guys have been very uh, actively uh, uh, checking on when the service availability is going to be coming to your area. So. Like I said, don't hold me to this, but kind of somewhere in the September, October time frame through the rest of the calendar year, that'll be our focus is the finishing up Coopertown. And again, uh, we're still already started on phase four uh, areas. And I mentioned again, right away, make ready. And then mainline construction will be coming in. And we're already doing some underground areas for mainline construction in phase four, even this summer. So we're doing as much as we can, as fast as we can to serve everyone, period. That's all it is. So if you're curious when you're going to be able to sign up, visit our website, click check availability and follow those prompts. You'll get an email update. We'll send you an email the minute you can sign up. We send postcards to your billing address, letting you know our progress. And when we open up your zone, now when we notify you that your zone is open, there are three different ways that you can sign up. Mm -hmm. You can come into any one of our local CMC lobbies. You can sign up online through your Smart Hub account, and you can also sign up 24 hours a day over the phone by calling 800-987-2362. So we want to make it as simple and convenient to sign up, so those are the three ways. But again, if you have questions, reach out to our team, email, Facebook, or give us a call. We are getting a couple questions, too. I don't know that we've uh, covered this a lot, but... You know, we're talking about how we build out by our substations. We talk a lot about yeah. substations, which I know probably doesn't mean a lot to everyone, yeah. but it is a really important factor in how we're constructing this network. And the reason that is so important is because sometimes we'll hear, why did my neighbor down the street or why did my neighbor just across the yard get it, but I didn't? Yes. And a lot of times what that is is that there is a substation boundary. So, Mark, do you mind to mention that a little bit more and then 
Kyle, if you don't, if you don't mind to pop the, the status map up just so we have the visual. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. And that's a hard question to answer because, like Kayla mentioned, that scenario of maybe a neighbor or a friend that lives maybe on an adjacent street or just down the street or the road from you may have it. But the reason is, like Kayla mentioned, we follow the path of electricity. We don't, we, we serve those members that are in that footprint through that constructed network. We don't jump over and feed other areas that are not fed out of that. And that's just the way our network is architected and that it's the way it's designed and uh, we, it's the way we manage it. Uh, it's the same way we manage our electric members as well. We don't uh, provide service outside of the electric footprint. So, you know, we have 31 substations and we uh, are building out from that substation itself all the circuits and all the feeders. And that's why Caitlin said, you know, we, we come through and we, we build out to that very end, but there may be, there are scenarios where obviously that, that substation feeder stops and it's that, that next house or just across the street may be fed from a different substation from a different direction. And you're wondering why. Well, if that's the reason is we follow the path of electricity overhead and underground on our circuits. And that's how we're distributing and building our fiber network as well. So um, that's, that's the simple answer to that is why you may have neighbors or folks down the road that have service and, and that unfortunate the way that works out, but that's just the way we have to maintain and to continue to build our circuits. So we've still got lots of questions coming in and we appreciate it. We uh, promise we're going to get all the answers. We're going to try and tackle some of the bigger ones today. And then uh, my team and I are going to continue answering you. We might reach out to you via message. It may not be tonight. I know we're probably going to work a majority of the day tomorrow, just making sure everybody gets those answers. But give us just one more second. We're going to scroll through here to make sure if there's anything that we have not covered in our presentation that we get those answers for you. Okay. Some of the questions that I did see, I know that uh, some of you had joined a little bit late. I wanted to let you know that if you were to view our status map on our website tonight and search an address, it is not up to date yet with our phase four announcement. We wanted to make sure we had the opportunity to talk this through and answer questions. So we are going to be updating our website status map tomorrow. But if you have any questions about a specific location, give us until about lunchtime tomorrow, and that way you can search your address and be able to see where it is as far as phase three, four, or five. And we'll also be updating that with some additional timeline information regarding our construction and availability. Mike, do you have anything else network-wise? Yeah, we did get one question about... Uh, some network, I'm gonna let Mike tackle that. Yeah, uh, one gentleman was asking if uh, he's already got at t fiber in his area now, if we could, uh, if we can exist right alongside them. And the answer is always yes, you can always have more than one provider to your home. But he mentioned us being a backup. We don't wanna be the backup, we're more reliable. Let's mm -hmm. be the primary, so give us a try. Yes, and again, no residential contracts. We include the equipment, free residential installation, free standard residential installation, so. You know, like I said, we'd love for you to come give us a try. Yeah, and talking about that reliability, there was another question came in about our construction. And we do what, it's called a technique called stranding lash. So we put up a steel messenger cable, and then we lash our fiber to it. So it is incredibly strong. It is resilient. Uh, we certainly have a lot of storms around here. We have wind storms. We have trees fall on lines. We have, uh, we have all kinds of weather events. And we have had outages. We've had storm events where... Power's knocked out. Trees fall through our fiber. And this stuff is tough. I'm not going to say it's 100% resilient to all types, but we've had fiber uh, laying on the ground because a tree knocked it off the pole, and it still works, right? Uh, obviously, we do restore power first because we can't really even troubleshoot our uh, network in the, in the homes that you live in unless we see what those ONTs are doing. And that requires power restoration first. But our crews are uh, working closely in right in behind the electric crews on restoration efforts and we are continue to be surprised at how just tough and resilient this fiber is it is an armored fiber so it is very tough it's um you know i'm not going to say it's 100 percent reliability but like mike has mentioned we are uh, have a very resilient redundant uh, built network and and very strong 
uh, we, we, we would uh, be happy to discuss that further. I'm getting in the weeds a little bit, but uh, good stuff. That's fun, though, because we, we did have a tornado uh, yep. that unfortunately hit Stewart County and a couple people lost their homes, but the fiber act was actually still live, even though it was laying on the ground and knocked down by a tornado. Yeah. The only reason it went down is we had to cut it to fix it. <laughs> yes. um, there's a few other questions here. So someone was asking you know, some other providers oversubscribe their service so that you get more than what you're actually paying for. Um, that's pretty common. So we do oversubscribe the service as well. So if you get 250, we actually give you a higher amount. Um, so that way, when you run a speed test, you can actually see 250 in your speed test. So mm -hmm. I won't get too deep there. Um, that can get a little complicated. And then someone else was asking, do we, re do we replace the router at no cost if it goes bad? Uh, the answer is yes. It's a managed service. We'll take care of the router for you. If the damage is caused by negligence or something that happens in your home, you know, there could be a service charge associated with placing that router. If it just goes bad on its own, it's sitting there doing nothing, nobody spilled milk on it or threw it across the room, you know, that, yes, we will always come out and replace that router. So that's the advantage of taking our router is you never have to go buy a home router again. That's an expense your family doesn't have to incur anymore. So that's something, you know, that's, that's money you can put back into your family budget and help pay for all these crazy gas prices. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kaylin pointed out a couple of questions. I'll try to cover it. One question is, do we share facilities with other providers? We do not. Uh, our network is all owned and operated by your electric cooperative. And so we, uh, we luckily, one benefit for us, we own the pole routes, right? That we provide the electricity on for the most part. We also own the conduit for the underground. So that's, we're utilizing those to our benefit to run this broadband network and this fiber network. Uh, another thing is what's included in a standard installation. Uh, Caitlin mentioned earlier, no cost. So, you know, everything, no matter where you live on our system that, you know, if you're off the road uh, or right on the road, uh, that drop will be constructed. Uh, no cost to you. Uh, we, Mike, Mike mentioned we, we install and provide the, the ONT and the router today. That's no cost to you. Standard installation. We do all the internal wiring. Now, if you request uh, a, a, a lot of additional Ethernet ports in your house, there would be an upcharge for that. Or you could certainly do that yourself or, or hire an electrician to do it. But I think we do provide up to one Ethernet port uh, from uh, our standard install. I'm sorry. Payment methods, yeah. Um, Emily might be better to answer yeah. that than I am. She she deals with that better than I can. Yeah. Yes, we had questions about a uh, couple questions. What payment methods yeah. do you accept? Emily's okay. got that one. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, you can um, obviously pay with cash, check, debit, or credit card. Either um, Mastercard, Visa, or American Express. We do not accept Discover at this time. Uh, I do apologize for those folks who um, use Discover. Um, you can also set up online payment through your Smart Hub account. You can set up recurring card payment with a debit or credit card. You can also set up um, bank draft online as well. And you were also able to um, set up bank draft at an office or over the phone if you wanted to do that and if you're not using a Smart Hub account. Um, another question was um, about billing for broadband service. It is a separate billing statement. So you do have the option to um, set that bill for your TV, internet, or phone service to um, be a different due date than your electric if you want to kind of pay one at one time of the month and one at the other. Totally fine. You can do that and set up an order. Um, it is a separate account number. So again, if you use Smart Hub and that's, that's your preferred method of managing your CEMC electric account, then um, as soon as you create your broadband account, it'll populate there as well. And then obviously check your billing statements for that difference in account number. So it'll be, again, just that last digit of your account number changes with the next higher digit um, for your broadband account number. So, yeah. Okay. So Petra asked earlier that they have uh, paint marked the yard twice. When should she expect them on the property? Petra, uh, if you don't mind to message our Facebook page with your service address, we can take a look at that. Uh, and reach out to you with an update. Yeah, it and is water-based paint too, so of course it is to rain, it's possibly clean washed away, so. <laughs> yes. Mike, we've got a, a question about firewall services. Do you mind to tackle that? Lance, oh, yeah. Lance said, is there firewall services in your router or do you rely strictly on endpoints for security? That's a really good question. Uh, it does have some limited basic firewall services. It is a residential grade router, so it's not gonna be like your your entry-level enterprise stuff like the sonic walls or even in, you know, definitely not the more advanced, you know, four minutes or Palo Altos or anything like that. So 
It's got some limited functionality. Uh, you will have access to get in there and play around with that, and you're also welcome to call tech support who has additional knobs they can turn and, and set work on setting it up to its full potential for you. Mm -hmm. There's another good one. Oh, somebody's got a log cabin and old log walls. Um, yeah, so we, we encountered that a lot. Uh, unfortunately, plant material like log walls, it, it just loves to eat Wi-Fi. It does not, Wi-Fi does not travel well through it. Um, usually in those situations, what we'll do is we'll work with you to get some Ethernet run between the rooms and get mesh units set up throughout the house. It does cost a little more to rent the mesh units, but it can definitely cover a log home like that and get you covered. We've had a lot of experience with that, especially uh, early on in Stewart County. So yeah, I know we did several of them like that. Uh, so Emily, you might uh, have a great answer for this one. Stephanie asked, how easy is it to transfer your services if you move? I'd like to say super easy, but I bet you can walk through the process. Oh yeah, better. if you have fiber servers at a current address and you're wanting to transfer, transfer it to your new one, obviously, you obviously need to check the availability to make sure that you're able to sign up for your new address. Um, if you are wanting to keep your existing equipment, such as your router that you have in the home, you're welcome to take that with you. Leave the ONT there. You don't need to bring that with you. Definitely bring your router. Um, and just let the representative know that you speak to that, hey, I'm bringing my router from this address over to this address. Easy peasy. So um, if the new address has had fiber service already, then you may be able to go ahead and get you connected quicker rather than later. If it hasn't, of course, then we will get the drop done, schedule your install, and that installer will go ahead and hook up that router that you already have. So yeah, super mm -hmm. simple, not complicated at all. All right. Yeah. Uh, another question Caitlin brought to my attention is about, back on discounts, and it's it's a it's a question about military and veteran discounts, and, and we certainly appreciate our military and our veterans, uh, but like I mentioned earlier, same same answer for senior citizens. We, we discount and we price our product as low as we possibly can so we don't offer additional discounts on top of that to our, our veterans or our active military. But again, uh, we, we really appreciate those, you folks, and uh, we hope you'll uh, understand that we're, our price point is already about as low as we, we can uh, price that product. So a, a couple more questions. Uh, somebody asked how big of a footprint does a substation take up? It varies, but, yes. but Mark can probably give a, a little bit more of an idea from what that range yeah, is. Yeah, that's, like. that's a large uh, range of questions. And I mentioned the, one of the phase four substation footprints is Mansker substation, which is very small. And if, you can, if you're looking at the project status map, I don't know if it's on the screen right now or not, but it is very small. But then you can compare that to a Cooperstown or a Dover, which is hard to even uh, see on here because it's already been served. It's all in the green. But, I mean, a, one substation could be literally 500 miles of line, uh, and that's a good way to look at it. Another one might be less than 100 miles of line. So the, the size of those footprints vary greatly depending on, you know, how dense that population of meters is in a particular substation. I mentioned earlier, White House is not a very big put footprint as far as a, a footprints of the substations go, but it's probably one of the most densely populated uh, footprints uh, for our electric uh, substations in our territory. So just a, a couple more. I'm seeing a lot of questions about different pricing. We are going to be posting the links from our website into the chat, into the event as well that link directly to our pricing. You all can always message us on Facebook as well. Um, we are going to take some time tomorrow and try and reach out to everybody. We're going to comb through these, but uh, if for some reason we skip you, I apologize. Just reach out directly to us on Facebook, and we'll make sure you get that information. Uh, somebody asked about how do our speeds compare with other providers, and right now we offer residential speeds up to 1,000 megabits per second. That's a gig speed. Our uh, speeds are symmetrical, metrical upload and download speeds as well. And just to recap, we bring 100% fiber all the way to the location and inside the home as well. So we're not stopping up the road or at the pole. We are bringing that fiber all the way to your location. And I saw a couple questions too about the timeline after you sign up into the install. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they're like with the drop that we talked about earlier. It does take some time to complete that construction on that drop after you sign up. But if you're watching right now and you have already signed up and you're waiting for the installation, please feel free to message us on Facebook with your address and we can certainly check on your service order yeah. as well. Yeah, that's a good point. That's something we're all always sensitive about is that time from sign up to installation. Because uh, like Caitlin said, we, we open zones, try to every week, but if, if our bucket of work gets too full, we don't want to add on to that till we get caught up. So sometimes we pump the brakes and pause a zone opening to let our contractors get caught up on those drops. So that time frame between sign up and installation is as narrow as we can get it, but it will stay still be anywhere from three to five weeks. And that's because of this, the backlog of work that we're dealing with. We've got a couple mm. questions too. Why so many new wires everywhere? We've seen that one a couple of times. So I'm not... Why so many new wires? I don't know. Um, well, again, we're, we don't have fiber facilities in our, in our service territory before we started building them in November 2019. So... Uh, we are building our own uh, Cumberland Electric own network. Um, again, we're mostly putting that on our pole route and some of our underground routes and follow the electricity. So we only put up one wire uh, along those routes. And now they're inside of that wire. There's a bunch of fiber optic cable in there. But that wire itself is, you know, maybe five eighths of an inch at most. And that can carry 144 pair of fiber. So uh, that's it, one wire to your house. That's usually aerial drop or an underground drop. And then, uh, so that's, we're, that's what we're dealing with on the wires. Yeah. And that question may be talking about too, you know, when we lay that initial strand, we wrap the fiber yes. around yeah. it. And then sometimes if we haven't completed the drop yet, you might drive by a pole and see the black box, the tabs yes. with the cabling wrapped around it. That just means we're mm -hmm. not quite finished with right. that piece there. And so that might be what, what a few people were talking Possibly. about as far yeah. as the wires. Yeah, because when we go through an area and those taps that we showed a picture of and Caitlin's talking about, you know, those are those are designed to be able to provide broadband services to all the homes and even expansion if there's, you know, new development in an area. So so those are what I think Caitlin's referring to by saying what the wires, the, the taps that are set there for uh, providing service to the home. And uh, just a, a couple more questions. Again, if we don't get to all the questions tonight, we will reach out to you directly and make sure you get answers or you can send us a message on our Facebook page as well. Lance asked a great question and we have conversations about this all the time when we're referring to what substations you all mm -hmm. are served out of. And uh, you know, yeah. many members of course are not familiar with what their substations are or what the plant is. So. Um, we don't have a public facing map regarding mm -hmm. what substation you're being fed from. If Kyle could put the project status map back up for you all to see, that's just how we're building yeah. out. That's how we refer to it. But after tomorrow around lunchtime, we'll have our website status map updated with this information. So you'll be able to search an address and get an idea of a timeline between now and the end of the project. Yeah. And um, yeah, so the substations you're right they don't mean anything to anybody now a lot of times those substation names correlate to a community name as well so that's why a lot of the media and maps that we put out have community names and landmarks and roads that obviously people can do but the best way is to look up your address on the status map uh maybe one last question that uh kyle mentioned is covering grants and i think i mentioned it earlier cumber electric certainly has applied for grants and we've won a couple of grants um and one of them was a state emergency broadband fund grant a couple of years ago. We were able to help offset some of the construction costs for the Adams area. And you can see up in, uh, that's in kind of a Northwest Robertson County and, and spills over into Montgomery County a bit, that footprint. Uh, the other grant that we have won was just through the FCC. It's, a, it's an RDOF dollars and it really was less for capital investment, but more operational, uh, offset some operational costs. And that's a grant that goes over a 10-year period that we get installments for. So that's all the grant dollars that Cumber Electric has received to build our project. And I said this, you know, earlier is we're probably halfway through uh, with construction and we're probably almost halfway through with the number of homes passed of the 108,000 meters that CMC serves electrically today. 
So um, we certainly pursue grants, and you probably have seen in the recent weeks uh, announcements from the White House about Internet for Everyone, and it's part of the Infrastructure and Jobs Act that passed late last year, which was, I don't know how many trillion dollars, and they have earmarked 45, I think, well, somewhere 40 plus billion dollars for Internet uh, uh, construction in the United States. Where that is today is, that's a, that's a year-long study after, the Congre after Congress passed that act. Now, the, another branch of the government's figuring out how much each state gets of that 40 plus billion dollars. And we are certainly watching that uh, and we will certainly apply for those grant dollars if they are part of our service territory or if our area is eligible for those. So, mm -hmm. But again, we certainly go after grant dollars, uh, which are our dollars. If they're from the government, they're our money, right? Uh, we all pay taxes. But that does not, we do not stop or slow down in anticipation. If we get grant dollars, we'll go back and build that area. That is not part of our discussion. Uh, we are funding this project mostly in-house and through, uh, you know, uh, our, uh, we borrow money to build this. But obviously, like I said, we're in it for the long haul. We're here for, we've been here 80 plus years and we don't plan on going anywhere. So we're okay with long-term investment because we know we're, investment, we're investing in our communities and that's priceless, right? There's no, we can't put any dollar amounts on that because you are the people that we serve, and you're the only reason we're here, is to serve electrically, and now we're bringing broadband to our areas. Mm -hmm. So Mike I think we've got one more. Mike's gonna... Yeah, I saw one more. Uh, Beverly asked about detached garages, and that's a common question. Mm -hmm. We get outbuildings, barns, mm -hmm. you know, you know in-house suite across the yard, pool houses, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, Lance, thank you for trying to, kind of jumping in there and answer that, and you are correct. It does depend. Uh, so if the building is very close to the house, there's a chance that the wireless backhaul might reach and we can, but we'll figure that out at install time. If you're, if you're pretty far away from the house, but less than 300 feet, if you want to have conduit pre-installed from somebody else, um, please do that and make sure there's pull strings in there. And what we'll do is we'll run an ethernet cord through that conduit to your other building, and then we'll install a mesh unit in that building. And again, it's just $5 a month for the mesh unit. The extra install is no charge. Um, if it is beyond 300 feet and it's, it's, it's just not going to work, Ethernet has physical limitations, it can't go much further than that, we could look at, it's, this would be kind of a custom install, but we could look at establishing a second service at the other building as long as it has electricity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great question. That, that is very common, and it's what I do at my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, I, I know we didn't get to everyone's questions. Like I said, if you have a question about availability at a specific location, about lunchtime tomorrow, we're going to have our status map updated with our announcement information and some additional timeline information. So you're welcome to go search any address for more uh, timeline availability. If you want to know the minute that you can sign up, be sure you visit our website, click Check Availability, and register for our monthly email updates. We'll keep you in the loop every step of the way. We'll begin to send postcards and emails directly to you about four months prior to our projection for a zone opening in your location. But as always, you can give us a call. You can message us on our Facebook page. And you can't see everybody here in the room, but I feel like I can speak for our team and say that we have been looking forward to tonight for just what seems like a really long time. It seems like a lifetime and it seems like two days. Uh, this has been one of the most exciting things I've ever been a part of. And uh, like Mark said, uh, we're doing this for you all and you all are what's giving us purpose. And this is why we're doing what we're doing to serve our communities. And we think you all are awesome. You're amazing. And uh, bear with us. My team and I, we're gonna be reaching out uh, a little bit tonight and then tomorrow as well to answer your questions, but please feel free to reach out anytime. We'll make sure that you have the information and we'll keep you updated on our progress. And we really just cannot wait to get you all connected. So thank you so much for joining us. Again, if you commented, you are entered to win in our giveaways. We're gonna reach out to those winners as well. And we hope you all enjoyed spending the evening with us. I know I had a fantastic time. And again, we are here for you all. So thank you all so, so much. And we want you to have a great evening. Thank you.